guys, it's Leah Buckles from Prestige Worldwide Medical Consulting. I am a U.S. Army veteran, physician assistant, and former CMP examiner. We've been doing this series on what happens in a CMP exam, and so today I wanted to come on and discuss what happens in a CMP exam for plantar fasciitis. So plantar fasciitis is a common condition that many veterans suffer from. Um, it can be related to your service in many ways, one being direct or primarily if you were diagnosed in service. And then you can have a secondary um, service, service connection for this condition if it's related on a secondary basis to another condition. I often see this service connected in relation to other orthopedic ailments or perhaps weight gain as an intermediate step because one of the most common causes of plantar fasciitis or things that contribute to plantar fasciitis is excess body weight. So your feet can you know, hold all of the weight of your body and with extra body weight, you're just putting more forces onto your feet. Okay, so we have some previous videos that you can check out uh, directly about plantar fasciitis itself. But in this video, I just want to go over what happens in the CMP exam. So in the CMP, in the CMP exam for this, you should get a packet in the mail prior, you know, several weeks prior to the examination telling you where you're going to have the examination, what, what the time is, who the doctor is, whether it's a nurse practitioner, a podiatrist, uh, a different type of physician, um, a uh, PA right? So you're going to get that information. You're going to show up the day of your exam. They may have you fill out some paperwork before you get there. And when you get there, they're going to go over the disability benefits questionnaire with you. So a disability benefits questionnaire is a document that the VA has created in order to help streamline the process so that raters can evaluate the specifics of your condition and what the examiner annotates to be your levels of disability, and then marry it up to the rating criteria, which is prescribed in the 38 Code of Federal Regulation. So all that being said, you can definitely obtain a copy of the DBQ if you go to va.gov and you print it out, okay? It's the, all the DBQs are there. You can ask your treating provider to fill one out. Um, you can go over it before your examination so you can kind of see what the questions are. Some of, there are some questions and then there are some other areas that they're just gonna look at your claims file or whatever documents the VA provides to them. And they're gonna just document it based on what they review. So. I'm gonna, I just have it pulled up from va.gov. So the first page is really just some um, statistical data about the examiner, how they evaluated you, what records they reviewed. They should annotate that they reviewed your claims file if they did, but you're probably not gonna be asked a lot of questions about that because it's more demographic information, your name, social security number, things like that. Um, the next section is section on page two is section 1B. It, and it asks specifically what conditions are being covered in this DBQ, because this is a this DBQ is specifically for foot conditions, including flat feet. Right. It doesn't have to be used for flat feet. It can be used for plantar fasciitis, Morton's neuroma, neuralgia, metatarsalgia, um, hallux valgus. I'm sorry. Uh, neuralgia itself is not on there. But again, Morton's neuroma is on there. Metatarsalgia, hammer toes, hallux valgus, hallux rigiditis. Um, flat feet, claw foot, so on and so forth. I mean, there's a ton of conditions. A a basically, anything that has to do with the foot, gout of the foot, can um, bone neoplasms like cancers, um, benign issues, tendonitis in the foot, arthritis in the foot. There's there's like ten or twenty different conditions that can be checked. But we're gonna just go over plantar fasciitis today, okay? But sometimes you can have multiple conditions. You can have flat feet, and you can have um, plantar fasciitis, and they may be doing an exam on both, okay? So the next section, we're going to go to page three, and they're going to ask, is it if there are additional diagnoses of the foot, list here. So if, if it wasn't listed in that second page where they can check blocks, check boxes, they're supposed to just type in another condition just manually. So then it's they're going to be asked to describe the history. So they may ask you, when did this start? Please tell me about the history of the condition. When did you first notice it? things like that. Then they're going to transcribe that information. The next question is, does the veteran report pain of the foot being evaluated on this questionnaire? So yes or no, do you have pain regarding the foot? It might be both feet. You might be there for just one foot. Okay. They're, and then they're supposed to document in your, your description in your own words, what you stated to them. The next question is, does the veteran report that flare-ups impact the function of the foot? Yes or no. And then it says, if so, ask the veteran, describe the flare-ups he, he or she experiences, including frequency, duration, characteristics, precipitating and alleviating factors, severity and or extent of functional impairment, 
that that you have. So maybe you're you have some foot pain um, and it's transient. It comes and it goes. Maybe your foot pain gets worse throughout the month doing different things. Let's see. So do you have any functional loss or functional impairment of the joint or extremity being evaluated? So do you have functional loss um, and they want you to describe it in your own, own words? So perhaps you can't even use that foot uh, and you've got to um, walk around on crutches. I'm not sure. Just what what is your functional impairment? You can't run anymore. Things like that. So the next section is specifically about flat feet. So I'm going to breeze by that. We'll do a different video on flat feet another day. Um, it's quite long, a couple of pages on flat feet. And then it gets to section to the next section, starting on page six, which is about plantar fasciitis. Um, I'm sorry, the end of page end of page five. Um, so specifically, it says plantar fasciitis, and these are the questions that are supposed to be asked. Has the veteran under, undergone non-surgical treatment for plantar fasciitis, yes or no? If, if so, indicate the side. If yes, did the non-surgical treatment relieve the symptoms, yes or no, and then the side. Then they ask, have you undergone surgical treatment? And then did the surgical treatment help? The next question is, if the veteran has not undergone surgical treatment, was the veteran recommended for surgical in intervention but was not a surgical candidate, yes or no? And then decide. The next question is, do you have functional loss of the feet specifically due to plantar fasciitis, yes or no? And then describe it. And then there's a section for comments. Next group is about different condition. So this DBQ is about 14 pages long, but if it's we're just looking at plantar fasciitis, a lot of these sections don't um, pertain, okay? So then we're gonna skip down past some of these other conditions that we're not gonna talk about today because they don't apply and they're not gonna be filled out if it's just for plantar fasciitis. Um, and we're gonna get to a section about surgical procedures. And then they specifically ask if you've had foot surgery, indicate the type, where, where, where was the surgery performed? What was the procedure done? Most people haven't had plantar fascia surgery, but it's possible so that that information will be in, um, annotated there. Um, then there's a section specifically on pain on the right and left foot. It, is there pain on physical examination? So when they physically examine you, was there pain? Um, and then there's, a, there's questions further on that block about does that pain contribute to your functional loss? Okay. And then there's an entire section about functional loss. Contributing factors of disability. Check all that apply. Um, no functional loss of the left or the right side. And then if there is functional loss, they want you to talk about, is there less movement than normal, more movement than normal? So is your functional loss causing you to have too much movement, not enough movement, weakened movement, swelling, deformity, atrophy, um, of disuse, instability, disturbances of locomotion. So are you limping? Okay. Interference with sitting, interference with standing, pain, fatigue, weakness, lack of endurance, incoordination, and then other. And each of those sections, they're asked to check right foot or left foot or both. Um, does procured evidence, meaning statements from you, Suggests pain, fatig fatigability, weakness, lack of endurance, or incoordination, which significantly limits function during flare-ups, yes or no, and then they ask um, which foot or both feet and for them to describe. Um, then there's some questions about functional loss during flare-ups and or repeated use over time, which feet. Um, and then they ask, basically, this is another physical examination question, is there pain um, with any of the following passive motion or active motion. So whether you're moving it yourself or they're moving your foot for you, um, weight bearing. So pain when you're standing, non weight bearing. Um, if you're just resting, is there pain? And then there's a catch all block about any other pertinent physical findings for them to just free text. Then they ask about scars because they always ask about scars because that requires them to open another DBQ if, if there is. And then there is, let's see, assistive devices. So they want to know if you're using any type of bracing or crutches or canes or walkers. Um, we're almost through it, almost through it. Um, then they ask about, basically, if you have 
is your impairment so bad that there are no effective functions remain other than that which would be equally well served by amputation? So they want to know if your functioning is so di diminished that an amputation would equally serve you to what you have now. Okay. Then they ask about diagnostic studies. So have you had an MRI or anything like that, x-rays, and, and to annotate that. Then they ask about um, functional impact. So how does this impact your employment? Basically give them some statements. And that's about it. I, I wanted to show you guys this in the beginning. So hopefully some of y'all hung around. Okay. But the plantar fascia is like this connective tissue of um, he, basically your heel cord. This provides you support. So this, this whole thing can get inflamed. Okay. And that's usually what plantar fasciitis is um, caused by, it happens in plantar fasciitis. A lot of times people will describe that it hurts worse in the morning. Um, it feels like it's cramped, things like that. Um, I hope this was helpful. Please let me know if you guys have any questions about plantar fasciitis in the CMP exam. And I'm glad that you guys um, hung out and watched this today. Please like and subscribe to the channel. I, I really appreciate you guys watching and I'll talk to y'all soon. Thanks.